Hello everybody, this is Pawn on the Road. So in this video, um, in the Volvo V90 T6 all-wheel drive, now I'll be talking about engine orientation, okay? The difference between transverse and longitudinal engine configuration and why Volvo, uh, who previously, which previously had uh, favored longitudinal engine installation, suddenly switched to transverse uh, engines. Okay, so this is the uh, engine room of the V90 T6. So, uh, like most of Volvo's current models, the V90 is powered by a variant of Volvo's uh, two-liter drive E engine. It is a four-cylinder transverse installed, transversely installed engine. So, when we say transversely mounted, it means that uh, the four cylinders are arranged in this orientation across the engine bay. Okay, so. Uh, the cylinders are arranged this way the crankshaft is also aligned this way and thus it rotates in this uh you know in this uh direction okay now in a longitudinal engine the cylinders are aligned in this direction and rotation is sent this way okay now how do you tell a transverse engine from a longitudinally mounted engine just by inspection alone uh well Firstly, you look at you if you can tell it is from the uh, the alignment of the engine block, okay. But the surest uh, sign, okay, will be the um, the orientation of the belts and pulleys, okay. So when you see the belt, so you, as you can see here, uh, the belts and pulleys, okay, the pulleys are all arranged this way, okay. So the pulleys are all on one side here, this way. So it did, this would be a transverse engine. Now, a longitudinal engine, you will notice that all the belts and pulleys are in this part of the engine bay, aligned in this way, because it had, all this rotation has to follow the direction of the crankshaft ro rotation. It is quite unlikely, almost impossible, that somebody will make a transverse engine and have all the belts and pulleys you know, spinning this way. It, it doesn't make sense. It is an unnecessary complication. So, having briefly covered the differences between a longitudinally and a transversely installed engine, let us go uh, go through some bit of history. Okay, now uh, previously, okay, during the days of the two forty, the seven sixty, the nine sixty, Volvo also had a longitudinal and en uh, engine installation. Okay, it was during the time of the eight fifty that Volvo. Uh, made a decisive switch to have all their models okay uh, install their engines transversely to power the front wheels okay now most luxury brands okay their core models like mercedes-benz bmw uh, lexus infinity all still insist on the longitudinal engine configuration sending power to the rear wheels okay now so volvo is being unique in a in being a luxury brand that uh, prioritizes that utilizes okay should I say entirely utilizes the front transverse engine configuration audi is a bit unique okay because audi uh, alternates between front and all-wheel drive but despite uh despite the front wheel drive uh layout being predominantly associated with transverse engines Audi utilizes a longitudinal engine to power its front wheel drive models as well. Okay, A4 upwards. The A3 models and below utilize Volkswagen group, uh, Volkswagen platforms. So those are transverse engines as well. Now, uh, Audi's solution is a bit of an oddball. Okay, so that is why Audis have a bit of a nose heavy feel because they in because of their insistence of ha on having a long engine a longitudinally mounted engine and front wheel drive what it, what actually happens is that here's the front axle all these engines are mounted ahead of the front axle so it means that when you drive in an audi right there's always an always additional weight hanging over the front wheels and that is why audis inherently feel nose heavy okay now so coming back to volvo the reason now most most car makers okay switch although they won't admit this but most car makers switch from switch to the transverse engine configuration because it is a cost effective and space effective uh, solution i mean just look at uh, bmw's 
X latest generation X1 or the 2 series Taurus models okay compared to say a 3 series the new X1 it is far 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 more spacious inside simply because now that BMW no longer need, has that uh, constraint of having to to, in, to include space for a rear prop shaft right now suddenly they have a lot of room to play with in the interior and they and you know they they know how and they made the very best out of the out of the the available the extra cabin space available so the x1 okay uh when i reviewed it last year it felt like it had the spaciousness that i've never felt before in a bmw model of that size okay so but for volvo okay one reason one of the key reasons why volvo uh, embrace the transverse engine configuration is less about cost and space but more about safety now here is why you see in a in a transverse engine configuration in a transverse engine uh, installation right the engine is mounted across the span of the vehicle okay so it is the the, the, the entire uh, you know the, the block imagine the block of the engine like as a brick so it's mounted along the width of the vehicle okay a longitudinal engine the engine points toward the passenger cabin so in a collision in a front end collision okay Volvo engineers believe okay that in a front end collision the engine block because it is point in a longitudinally mounted engine block because it is pointed towards the passenger bay towards the passenger cell in a in a front end collision the engine block potentially can push into the passenger bay creating a hazard okay whereas in a transversely mounted block okay what happens is that because the block is this way right the block the engine block can absorb part of the the the, the collision energy more effectively and thereby effect better uh, cabin protection during a crash okay it is one of the reasons why the xc90 the previous generation xc90 despite being more than a decade old was able to pass the i the U united states iihs small overlap crash test with flying colors okay late in its model cycle okay the iihs small overlap crash test was a very very new thing it was it was introduced okay just as the xc9 the previous gen xc90 was nearing the end of its model life cycle it is like a student getting straight a's for an exam that he or she did not even study for did not even go to classes for okay that is the the that is how the the xc that is the significance of the xc90's achievement in in acing the small overlap crash test the physics of that is uh, maybe i will i want to explain in another video but continuing it it explains also why right okay that since after the, the 850 right volvo mounted all its engines transversely and it led to some very interesting uh models or variants okay the high performance variants if you would recall the previous generation sorry not the not previous gen, the current axis the s60 the Vol, the current Volvo s60 okay now it is in malaysia it is available only as the s60 t6 also powered by this uh by by this uh, two liter drive e engine but the original s60 t6 okay was actually powered by a three liter inline six engine okay now as you know inline six engine six cylinders acro arranged across the line so in one line okay so it is actually naturally a very long engine and it is and vo and the s60 together with the previous gen xc60 and v uh, v60 was unique in being one of the few models in the world okay to offer a, a transversely mounted inline six engine because you see how the such is the length of the inline six engine right it is not easy to mount it transversely across the engine bay because your you guys right that's that small space between your two front wheels are is very limited you have to fit your transmission together with your engine in that small space between the wheels so when you talk about inline six right usually you only see it in 
a longitudinal en engine configuration. Volvo is unique in offering it in a transverse engine installation. Same goes to the previous gen uh, S80 and XC90, which had a 4.4 liter V8 by Yamaha, developed by Yamaha. Also mount arranged in a, in a transverse engine configuration. Perhaps the only V8 that I can recall installed in a transverse configuration as well. So yeah, so that's a bit a little a little bit of interesting trivia, okay, about Volvo. That that's something that's that is something that I've learned about only fairly recently, uh, and was and and something that really fascinated me because we we all know the transverse engine is mostly limited to four cylinders. Uh, three cylinders, maybe even V6 engines, but Volvo had this had other than cost and space, which is the usual uh, usual reasons why why most manufacturers use the transverse engine configuration. Volvo actually had a legitimate safety related uh, concern in embracing the transverse engine configuration as well. So that's a little bit of trivia for you to share with your friends. Okay, um, until my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.